she comes out broken. She comes out, could anyone possibly love me again after what I did? Could God have had it? Should they? Ought they? Because the child is dead. And she's broken. But she comes back out and say to me so often, because I decided to force things all the time. It's one. I'm outside of the bed. And my mother says to me, Father, after what I just did, could God ever love me again? And I say, Mom, wrong question. Wrong question. Very important to know this. God's not changeable. God made you out of love. He died for you out of love. And He'll never stop loving you. Never, ever will God stop loving you. The question is that God has for you. It's you who stop loving God. Will you love God again? Hmm? Will you love God again? That's the one. And so it's very important that when you go to these places, where that's their weakness, we bring Jesus Christ, we bring God to these places. And you've got to go with the mindset of Christ. You can't go there and protest, picking, screaming, yelling, righteousness, all waste of time. Stay home. Stay home. You can't go there and tell people you're evil, blood is on yourself. No! This is God with us, Calvary, Mother Day. You go there with the same mind as Jesus Christ, the Blessed Lady of John, for the cross. Why did Jesus go to Calvary? He went there to die out of love for the people that killed him. And so when you go there, you must go there the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Out of love for the people who are caught in the culture of death. Are the babies part of the culture of death? They are not. The babies that are dying, they're not part of the culture of death. You say, I'm going to save the baby, save the baby. That's nice. But that's not part of the culture of death. The culture of death are those doing it to the babies. And they're the ones that need your love and your presence and your prayers. The unborn children, my friends, they did nothing wrong in their lives. They go directly to God. Directly to God. It's the people doing this, their souls are at risk, salvation of souls. So when you go to an abortion clinic, you go in prayer, you go to, and you should, but that's their weak spot. You must go there in love for the people who are caught in the culture of death, who are doing this, working there, the parents and so forth, you see? Because they're the ones that need our presence. If you change their hearts before him, you'll save the baby. <coughs> if you don't, and the baby dies, well, you know, it's interesting. We're told in, in the Gospels, Matthew, that both thieves cursed Jesus at the cross. Both thieves had on either side of Jesus, they both cursed him. But we're told in Luke, one of the thieves, before he died, he said, my God, he, he listened to Jesus say, Father, forgive them. He saw Mary and John pray. He said, my God, he is the son of God. He is the king. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, this day will be with me in paradise. But you know, the centurion did not believe. And after Jesus died, the centurion, the soldier, he took the lance and put it into the side of Jesus. And blood and water came out. And Matthew tells us at that moment, the curtain in the temple split in two, the holes heaven went dark, thunder, and the centurion said, oh my God, he was the son of God. I'm saying to you this. Many women in our society today are brainwashed into thinking, if I had an abortion, if I had an abortion, it was all my problems, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And they go in, and in the beginning, they said, oh, leave the womb, the child is dead, I can work my life. And suddenly, suddenly, that same thing, they said, my God, it was a child of God. What have I done? When they come back out, they need you as Christians to be there in love, praying, bringing to them what the centurion found, the living Jesus, the risen Christ, and his mercy, and his love. The soldier put the lance beside of Jesus. We are not there to condemn. Why are we there? You know, the media likes to make two sides, pro-life, anti-life, pro-life, anti No, there's no two sides. No two sides. Sorry, sorry. You are called to make Jesus present today. What Jesus through you is made present today. There's no two sides. We are there as ambassadors of God's unconditional love for everyone. 
born and unborn, were there for the mothers and the fathers who killed the child to bring them that unconditional love of God after it to bring it back to God. Now, when we do that, the people, you see, the devil would allow us to have the death of the child, so he'd get the souls of the mom and dad. Because the soul of the child is right to God. But the souls of the others are at risk. So when you go there, you have to bring the merciful, everlasting love of God to these people. It's not easy. It's called being a Christian. What did Jesus say? The last commandment I gave you is this rather simple one. Love your enemies. What? It's tough enough to love my friends. I might love my enemies. Yes, I'll give you the grace. I'll give you the grace. I'll show you how it's done. I'm going. Peter didn't understand. He said, Peter, it's dangerous where you're going, Jesus. I know it's dangerous. They're going to kill me. I know that. Where are you going? I love for them. I'm going to offer my life for them. And after they do it, they will realize, my God, what have we done? What have we done? And I will offer my life in, 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 in for them. You know, it's very interesting. Jesus gave his life. I had a group of young people. And after Mass one day, they said to me, that was boring. <laughs> boring? I said, boring? I said, my God, for me, Mass is frightening. Frightening? I said, yes, it's frightening. It should be for you because I heard what you said. What, what did you say? He said, did you realize in that Mass, the priest said, what did the priest say? The priest said, Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice will be pleasing to God. And you said, Amen. Do you know God asked for your life? And you said, Take it. Amen. And He's going to take you up on that. That's not boring. That's frightening. God's God means it. If the Mass is to be meaningful, God's sacrifice is finished, complete. It's made present. We can unite our sacrifice to His sacrifice. You see? And so what we are asked to do is to give our lives to God. So Jesus has completed His sacrifice, but now we are to continue to make present that sacrificial love of God, where God gives His life to others in our presence in love to the people who are of death. Who needs your presence at the abortion mills? The people doing the abortions. The abortionists. The politicians. All those who are caught with least needs your presence is the unborn children. They go directly to God. And the devil will let us have that child for the others, for the rest. What we go there, this is the Achilles heel. We go there as the Jesus to call them to repentance. To call them to change. And we go there with the same attitude, the same mind, as of Jesus Christ, in love, in mercy, in compassion. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Of course you want to be there for the unborn children. Of course. Imagine if there was no one there when Jesus died. Imagine that. And yet, the crowd was yelling, Barabbas, Barabbas. Choice, choice. And everybody was afraid to go to Calvary. Eleven of the twelve priests were afraid. There was only a few women. There was one man there, John, the young fellow, and a few others. But everybody today knows the names of the people who were there when Jesus died. Everybody knows. And thanks be to God they were there. Because we now know the final words of Jesus. We know the final gift God gave to us was the gift of his mother. We know that Jesus would say, Father, forgive him. But Jesus died surrounded. You know, we tend to have artists depict Jesus abandoned, dying. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalm 22. Well, he was saying Psalm 22. Yes, he was. He prayed the Psalms all his life. In Psalm 22, if you go back and read it, it's a description of the passion of Jesus Christ. He was praying the Psalm. It ends up in hope. But Jesus did not die abandoned. Jesus died surrounded by love. By compassion, by people suffering with him. Mary, John, Mary Magdalene, the holy women. The unborn <coughs> children should not die alone. They should die with someone there, loving them, suffering with them, compassion with them, praying for them. And when we die, and we all will, and we go before God, you're going to find out with friends who will say, Jesus, these are my friends. You know, I live